everyone. This is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing here on Conscious Business Zone with my new friend, Michael Feely. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good morning to you and good evening to me. Yes, yes. So I'm so excited because we were able to connect the dots and put our time zones together so Michael could speak with us today. And I think you'll be so, so, so excited to meet him and to learn about him as a resource for you for learning about our true origin and the true ways, the true history of the world. Um, Michael's a former um, UK police officer. He was a, a detective, I think, for 17 years, something like that. Is that right? Senior police officer of 17 years of a 30-year 30, 30 career. Uh, oh, 30 years. Been, uh, patrol officer and also the investigation of crime. So it was... Oh. So, so what we want to say is that if we want you to think about Mulder from the X-Files. <laughs> because what, <laughs> what Michael's doing now is he's written seven books... And he's learned and experienced. I think he is a conduit for a lot of this energy of esoteric knowledge because he's being um, guided by his highest knowing um, to all this knowledge. So, so um, and Michael has his own publishing company, just like we do. And as I said, he he has um, an uh, he is an opportunity for you to learn some of the things that never made sense <laughs> in the history books and for possibly to guide you as a spiritual coach through the maze because um, there's going to be a lot of disclosure coming up and we need people like Michael to help us understand and find our way. So Michael, okay, so you, you, were, <laughs> you were in you're in a totally different world. How did you make this change? How did, how did you go from following all the rules to questioning all the rules? <laughs> that's, that's a very good uh, analogy and, and two separate halves of the same stick, really. But it kind of, it kind of sort of made me do it, really. And as I say, it took me a long, long time to get into a career that I'd always wanted to do which was the, the, the UK police force. And when I eventually got in there as a sales patrol officer, I was dealing with all kinds of emergency, non-emergency calls. I was dealing with all different levels of crime and investigating different levels of crime. He taught me the art of investigation. He taught me how to piece evidence together and not go in there with any sort of predetermined uh, view, but just to follow the, the evidence. Probably about 12 months to, before the end of what was to be the end of my career began to become very, very disillusioned with what I was being told to do, what uh, senior police officers were telling me to do, and I was refusing to do them. So the last 12 months or so of my career was quite miserable and quite disillusioned. At the same time, and again, I, I, I do believe that this was sort of predetermined, but at the same time, I was on a daily basis multiply experiencing the paranormal, supernatural, UFOs, seeing dimensional portals opening up and seeing uh, ET craft coming out of dimensional portals. For anybody who's seen the movie Clouds and Cancer of the Third Kind, well, that happened to me. Me, my wife and a couple of other friends were invited to a certain location at a certain time. I'd actually uh, stood and face to face with uh, a being not of this world. And I was really, really was becoming multiple a multiple experience so I was time traveling consciously I was going back in time I was having visitations from the past to my present so there's all of these different things going on that was really turning my my world completely upside down so I was always open-minded I was always questioning the system I was always even at the age of seven and eight questioning films and movies and biblical films as to whether these these miracles, these things that the Bible tells us were happening, could actually happen. And this was at the age of seven and eight. From 2009, when I really, really was turfed out of my career, I continued to experience 
but not only was I experiencing, but I was also giving the information as to what I was experiencing. So I never had the answers for me and for anybody else who was surely going to be experiencing what I was experiencing at some time in their future. And then continued with esoteric, really hidden knowledge, deep, deep downloads of the mysteries. What are the pyramids? What are Stonehenge? What do the pyramids represent? What were they there for? Who built them? How did they build them? And how does that correspond to all of the monuments and monoliths on Earth and beyond Earth? Because mathematically, in longitude and latitude coordinates, a lot of earthly monuments and, and, and monoliths give you the precise location of other monuments and monoliths on other planets. So it's almost like a satellite navigation system through longitude and latitude mathematics. And then it really continued in a more advanced state when I was getting sort of quantum equations in my head. I was being allowed to see alien technology in my room. Uh, what once was occasion was a, a see-through sphere just appeared in my bedroom. And inside that sphere, there was advanced technology that I could see rotating inside the sphere. So that's pretty much how, how my life turned. Because when you, when, when you experience what I was experiencing and... You know, when, when you have the, uh, an investigative mind, when, when you, you are a police mind, then when you see something, you want to know what it is. And you go through various processes of elimination. So you don't just see a UFO and think that's a UFO. You go through various processes to work out what it really is, what it could be, what it's not. And I could never go back to who I was because I'd no change. I've never been changed. So all I could do was move forward. And that's really what I did. And well, I, 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 I love that because I think that um, everyone's having a different kind of awakening experience where they're thrown out of the matrix of normal <laughs> and something is revealed to them that um, sparks this um, change of, it's almost like your soul mission, right? You, you must have decided okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the rules and then I'm going to have these experiences that I can't help but be curious about and find definitions. And then I'm going to share them. I mean, the, I can't wait to see the next part of what you're doing. And, and um, I have to say the, um, the way that you put things together, I haven't gotten to read your books, but I've watched lots of your videos the way that you put things together, it's like, of course, uh, it, your your logic and the the um, the wisdom that you seem to uncover of it just makes sense. It's it's the logical uh, solution rather than our our fragmented um, conceptions. Like for instance. Um, when you you found all these monuments and said that they were all connected all over the world and it was mathematically and, and energetically, that makes total sense that anyone that was going to um, populate the earth, that was going to create our planet and make it livable, might have to put uh structures in place to keep it stable because it tilted that's what happened to atlantis it tilted on its side so it makes total sense what you're finding is the pieces that connect all the dots and and, and are you surprised when when these come i mean how how does because it, it's amazing what you've done i love 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 it Thank you. I'm, I'm not surprised now because <laughs> it, 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 it's an everyday thing. I mean, literally, I can just, if you imagine Isaac Newton and he's walking through the field or he's sitting beneath the tree, whatever the scenario it turned out to be, but all of a sudden you see that door and, and then we have the complete based on that one observation. It's the same for me, exactly the same for me. And I can be sitting there and all of a sudden I can have a question and an answer in the same moment. I can have a gigantic jigsaw in the same moment. And it pieces it. Spider in the web. I can see all things. And when we said at the beginning of, of, of the question really that people are going through 
one level of spiritual awakening or another what they're experiencing is modern day initiation when you look at the the, the initiation of the past it was done in pyramids it was done in temples it was done in, in, in sacred places initiation in the modern day is done as crossroads and this is of life everyday life so initiation initiation really is the expansion of the body in order to be able to tolerate higher divine frequencies yes so yes. unless as you are, have, have advanced your personal body your mind your nerve endings your spirit if these divine energies which are undiluted come into you then it can cause serious damage to them. and that is why many years were spent in the expansion of the vessel that is so that really is what initiation is and when people are doing spiritual awakenings they are really experiencing an initiation of some kind so no it is it's no longer a surprise to me that these some 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 of the some of the answers that i have and i'll, I'll give you just a few in a moment and then your your viewers will be some of the few people in the hell of the world that know what i'm about to say but when i when i started investigating these things and i looked at i looked at all of the civilizations of earth as different civilizations you know you have the mayans the babylonians the sumerians the egyptians i looked at them as, as being different civilizations separate and what i soon realized is they're not because it is the same group of advanced humans that built these monuments and i'll tell you how later that have spread across the earth and disembarked so whenever you find a sacred monolith or a sacred monument, a sacred pyramid, anywhere on this planet, it is the same group of people, and that is where they disembarked and they insulated their advanced knowledge and their technology. So the pyramids are really a legacy and a silent witness to the knowledge and the wisdom that once reigned on Earth. So what does a pyramid represent? Okay, I'm going to tell you now what a pyramid is and what it means. And as I say, you'll be one of the few people in the world that know what the pyramid really is. Let me start with creation. You have unity, you have nothing in the zero dimension. Now, in order for spirit, the law of spirit, which is what we know as God, in order for that law of spirit to advance and develop, it needed a resistance. So it created matter. It separated from unity to create matter. Which is, the, which is basically the negative side of God, the negative side of spirit. So we now have the law of spirit, we now have the law of matter. Now when this dimensionless state comes in and manifests into the third dimension, it forms as a triangle. So if you imagine just a dot on a piece of white paper, which is dimensionless, it is the zero dimension, it is the one that it is everything and nothing in simultaneous existence. That black dot, if it moves in any direction, becomes a line. A line is endless unless you are in a dimension, a world that has a beginning and an end. In a world that has a beginning and an end, a line has to be confined. So that confinement is a triangle. So God manifest in the third dimension is a triangle. So when you get a third dimensional triangle, what do you get? A pyramid, which is the four faces of God, which is the four cardinal points. So what does the pyramid represent? The basic form of matter is a cube, and I'm using a dice as a cube here, but the basic form of matter is a cube. Now, if I was to shave all four sides or all four tops off that cube, again, I would get the pyramid. So what does the pyramid represent? it is telling us a divinity within matter the pyramid represents those who have found their divinity the tetrahedron the pyramid within the cube within matter that is what the pyramid is, is telling you so now you know something that egyptologists scholars researchers do not know the pyramid is divinity within man that is what it represents because you have the, the tetrahedron inside the cube which is matter so those who have self-realization those who awaken their divinity and discover their divinity within their matter within their material body is a pyramid and when you look at the christian cross and christ on the cross 
the cross is physical man where we basically crucify our divine self on the cross because we concentrate mainly on the material on matter and therefore well, that becomes our absolute reality we have a five sense consciousness so we then become the criminal observing the divine one on the cross which is the three crosses of calvary so we are divine and this divine race that were once operating on the seventh sphere of existence which was god consciousness they were known as the sons of god and they're the ones with the elongated skulls because of that they needed a greater central brain power they were the sons of god and they were represented by the lion so surprisingly when you look at the sphinx of egypt he represents the sons of god who were the advanced human who will be able to create monuments how did they create them when you look at the word stone now believe it's not the bible. original bible is the gift plateau in egypt everything you find in the bible is found in egypt christ is encrypted mathematically within the great pyramid and so on and so on new jerusalem is encrypted within the mathematics of the Sphinx. So you have this wonderful image and wisdom, and it's the sons of God who created these, and they did it in two ways. When you look at the word stone, it becomes very biblical. The word stone means father and son. So all of a sudden, we have two parts of the Trinity: father and son, in the word stone. When you look at sun in Hebrew, it's bena, which means build. But sun also means sonic or resonance. So what is it telling us? They were built with sound. The monuments, the pyramids were built by sound. The stones were lifted by sound. The, the stones were cut with laser precision because at certain octaves and certain frequencies, sound creates laser beams. And that is how they did. What they were able to do is get for argument take a cube a giant cube and they were able to mark out the dimensions that they wanted and then everything else would completely de dematerialize so you would be left with the shape of the monument that they wished that is how they were creating them so when you look at the likes of the great pyramid again which is crushed you see that at certain places when you use a certain word in a certain frequency at a certain time divisible by seven you open up secret passageways that you can't see with the naked eye and when you go into those passageways if you go up 980 feet down in, into the ground now putting that into some kind of perspective that is almost the height of the eiffel tower down and when you get into these passageways there are a series of different rooms the doorways that are voice activated and you have to have the word the correct tone and the correct number then they open and then they completely catalog the complete of mankind from beginning the adam and cash is what we're in now the sixth civilization the fall but it also re represents the seventh civilization as the torch bearers of the future and that's why when we see the olympic torch that is why when we see the Steve liberty with her torch they are the flame bearers bearers of humanity coming according to in encryptions within the great pyramid so you are now one of the few people know what the pyramid means and what it represents wow okay so i have to ask a couple of questions because that was a lot <laughs> um one of the questions i have is is this information did you find this information from esoteric knowledge from the mystery schools or did you intuit a lot of it it's a bit of both a lot of it was, a lot of it was looking at looking at existing information but working it out from existing information so when i caught sight of egyptian star codes which later became the hebrew calendar which was later hidden by the Knights Templar and I located when I've looked at the star codes I've worked out the age of the Great Pyramid from Egyptian star codes and so, so a lot of it is looking at existing information working out from the existing information a lot of it 
is sort of innate knowing, intuition about seeing something and just just some just, just piecing it together. As, as I said at the beginning, yeah, a lot of information just pops into my head. A lot of answers just pop into my head, and I can just be innocently walking through them all. I can innocently on my on my sofa, and straight in. And in that moment, in that moment, thousands of years of mysteries are answered. Before I went to, on vacation to Egypt in 2010, I had a strange cryptic message from a psychic. And she basically said, regarding your trip to Egypt, you're going to uncover great insights. And there's going to be lots of knowledge added to your toolbox. You need to close the right-hand side of the Sphinx of Egypt as you possibly can. It has some, basically has some information to give you. I do and I have a lot of I have a lot of depth, shall we say? So yes, it's, it, it is at mystery school depth. It is natural law, natural law, mathematical law, spirit, which is God. How to manipulate laws of nature, which is what they were doing, so that they never worked with Hebrew slaves. They worked with the forces of nature, which able to manipulate, and that is what they were doing so it's a mixture of all of those things but it's you know, it's you now it's all pieced together in my mind it now becomes easy whereas in the beginning i had to be brick by brick but now it's it's almost like just just topping up the foundations now wow <clears throat> wow i can't wait to read your books because um this all of this makes all of the other esoteric knowledge functional for me it it puts it all it's almost again as like it lands into my reality have you ever had a near uh, a um past life reading where they found that you were um the head of one of these mystery schools or something <laughs> i've never had an initial reading however when i in conversation uh I've been given information in conversation. <clears throat> and the, the information that I've been given, given in conversation is that in, in several lives, I was a high priest of the mystery schools of Egypt. So that's yep. the knowledge key yep. of ancient Egypt. That's what I'm and getting to. That, that has come through me over many, many durations. Now, when you look at the, the sons of God, who who I mentioned earlier, the elongated schools, when, when the sons of God, took the daughters of men that was really to create a genetic line in order for them to reincarnate in a future time and some of them incarnated into a future time to help humanity out of its ignorance out of its lord of matter which is what we know as satan so lord of matter satan really is the lord of matter alive so when we just concentrate and identify with physical body that comes out absolute reality but that brings any consciousness alive within us so that that is what a satanic consciousness is. It is, it is the loss for money. It is the loss for power. It is it is materialistic. It is it is sexual. It all it is all of these things. It's the, the 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 law of spirit, which is God. And when we bring Satan alive, the law of matter alive, that becomes a thing. When we look at the word evil, it is the word in reverse. So evil is really the opposite polarity of eternity. So that is that so basically you, you become a satanic conscious and identify only with your body so the the to be that that the reason that you can't see the bodies of the evidence of this alone is because it's telling you not to concentrate on the, the five sense consciousness but to cut on the divine mind that is why you can only see head and that is what they're telling us concentrate on the divine mind you will make divine conscious you'll become, you become the god man you become god walking on earth on the seventh plane of existence which is what the sons of god were doing so so i i have the sense that you didn't need to reincarnate and that you in your past have been an ascended uh, master and that you came back at this time to help others i i don't think you um you didn't bring a bunch of karma to clear like most humans. You had some because that's part of the game here. 
but I, I have a sense that you you didn't have to come back. Um, okay, I have another question for you. Oh, and there's some wonderful things. Omar's here, Sugar Bee's here. Thank you, thank you. Inner Peace with Denise is here. Okay, so she's, well, Denise um, Chadwick, who's in London, um, says, can I clarify about the four-sided pyramid that he showed us as he called it a tetrahedron? Just clarifying is a tetrahedron has three sides and a triangular base. The four-sided pyramid has a square base. Yep, yeah, the, the, the square base is a number four, which again is a two-dimensional cube, which is matter. And when you had the four as a triangle, you get the number seven, which is the key to the third dimension. However, a three-dimensional triangle is a pyramid. So for argument's sake, you know, a square is, is a shape, but a cube is a three-dimensional square, same as a, as a, as a three-dimensional triangle, the hadron is a pyramid. So when you take the four sides off the cube, it gives you divinity within matter. And that pyramid is. So yes, a, a triangle is, in, is important because it is the manifestation of the divine in the third dimension. That is the, the limiter from zero dimensions to the first dimension, which is combined in a tri triangle in, in, in a world beginning and end. Otherwise, the line would just go on forever and that would become infinity. So the itself takes you from zero dimensions to spinning and twisted and adding things to the pyramid, you get infinity. And when, when you see the likes of the, of the Temple of Osiris, when you have the flower of life burnt in, into the wall, the flower of life is the biblical 144,000, because 144,000 is the frequency of the whole of creation, yes. which is the flower of life. Yes, yes. So, yes, to, so you have a, a base which is four, four, a triangle which is three, which gives you a number in the Great Pyramid is either seven or divisible by seven. But then again, the third dimensional key is the number seven. The, the now is the seven chakras. You have the seven, uh, seven continents, seven seas, the, the seven wonders of the world. It's number seven is the key to the feminine. And that is why you have a base and a triangle. She says, thank you. Thank you. So I, yeah. I, I again, when, when you just say all of this, I'm, I'm still like, okay, did I get it? <laughs> so I may have to listen to this again. <clears throat> One of the things that, um, and there's some wonderful comments, Sugar Bee is, wow, someone caught the sun close with a good telescope and a square cube can be seen in the sun. And, and then um, Omar put cross as a geometrical cube. So yeah, so so your fans are your fans are getting it. Um, I'm a little slower, I think. <laughs> oh, well, the, but, but, cube, the, the, the cross is really six cubes, and the number of man is the number. Oh. <clears throat> so, so if you look at a cross, you you will see it has six cubes. But when you like in, in the true view, man, when you when you put your arms out, stretch and your body straight. Yeah. You become the you become the cross, and we crucify our divinity because we concentrate purely on matter, and that is what it is telling us. We become the criminal, observing the crucifixion of our divine self, which is the cross within us. That is it's telling us. So, so the, the cross and the cube uh, is man within matter, full of man, the sacrifice. So when you a celestial terrestrial place through the holy grail which is one you have to the word altar is place of sacrifice and the womb is of sacrifice because you come into this world and you've relinquished that for this now that we are all born so the divine child is born in a stable recognizable this is really humanity and humanity so the divine child the christ is born within animalistic nature and he must develop within animalistic nature it uses the 12 revelations the energies of the 12 revelations which are the 12 signs of the zodiac in order 
to advance itself. Now, one of the main key energies is Capricorn, which is why we're told that the Christ, the Divine Child, is born in December, because that is the sign of Capricorn, the goat. So the goat, contrary to what we're told about being Satanism, the goat represents the Divine Child. That is why we call children kids. So the goat is the Divine Child, ruled by Capricornus, December, etc., where we're born in the stable, which is the animalistic nature of mankind. That is why the divine child has to develop within a stable of animals. That is what the Bible is telling us. Okay. <laughs> Once again, it's like, okay, <laughs> that was a big dump for me. Okay, so I wanted to also ask you, because I, I know I'm gonna have to listen to this again and listen to more of your videos and buy some books because um, there's so much of this that is um, gonna make, help people on the path through all these changes that we have right now. Right now what's happening is little by little, there's disclosure of our original origin um, and that the universe where, uh, is mathematical. That's the, actually the language of matter is mathematical. And so a lot of what you figured out is a way to, without having a high mathematical degree <laughs> for us, regular people, to understand that and use it in our everyday lives as a guide, as a guide. Um, one of the things, one of the videos that I watched, uh, you were talking about dimensions and about people in different dimensions. And I'd love it. Um, I'm very interested in near death experiencers and people that have had spiritually transformative experiences. And I'm a volunteer for an international organization um, called IONS that is for the International, international Association for Near Death Studies. It's been in existence for 40 years. And when you, I watched some of your videos about ghosts, about the gray shadow people. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because I think my, my audience loves the NDE stuff. So they hopefully will really enjoy what you talk about, about these shadow beings. Would you mind sharing some of that? No, of course, in, in, relation, to, in relation to creation, you have to have, in order to have knowledge, in order to have perception, in order to have a created world as we understand it, you have to have two complementary halves. They live in simultaneous existence for eternity. So for, a, for an example of that is life, physical life for me now is manifest and physical death is unmanifest. At some point, they will change places and physical death will become manifest and physical will become unmanifest. Now, when they change places again, that is what we call reincarnation. So we have two complementary halves that must always exist one scene, one ending. When we pass physically, there is always a conscious remnant of experience. And that conscious remnant is what we all who, when they come through to us, when they still interact with us, they take on the former appearance in order for us to recognize who they are, in order for that communication to continue. Now, when you start looking at dimensions, for, if I was going to take, if I was a two-dimensional being and I lived in, in, in the flatlands, two-dimensional flatlands, I live in a square, which is my house, which is my reality. Now, that square for me has doors, it has windows, which are closed. I do not understand up because I'm two-dimensional. So if I now, as a three-dimensional being, wish to step inside the square of that two-dimensional reality, I would just appear from nowhere. If I was to then step out of that two-dimensional square, I would just disappear and vanish into nothing. Because two-dimensional beings do not understand three dimensions. So when people say to you that I'm hearing voices or I'm hearing someone call my name, that is because you're being called from a dimension that we don't understand and we can't see. So that is really dimensions, and when you see UFOs and, and different things going off at 90 degree angles, 
if you wish to change reality or change dimension, you go at 90 degree angles. That is why UFOs do 90 degree turns. Because in, in, in a geometric grid, that is how we shift from reality to dimensions. So shadow people, when something casts a shadow, it loses a, a dimension in its projection. So if I was to go out now in this lovely sunshine, I would cast a two dimensional shadow because I'm a three dimensional being. I have seen many three dimensional shadows, which means that they must be a fourth dimensional being. I've seen them, well, I've heard them rattle my bedroom door at six o'clock in the morning so violently, it was like an earthquake. And as I've come out of my bedroom to see what it is, I've seen shadow people walking through walls. I've seen, uh, I've had, when I was invited to do a talk, just February 2020, uh, in my hotel room in San Francisco, there was a shadow person in the room. And when I when I took a picture outside the window, there was a UFO shooting past outside my, my hotel window. So these three-dimensional shadow people are at least four-dimensional entities that are coming into our reality from, from angles that we don't understand. And that really is, is, is in a very, very short explanation how dimensions work. Unless you understand that, that particular dimension, you can't see things. So when people see, and, and we've all seen them on YouTube, where you see sometimes seven or eight lights just appear in a line, and people think it's seven or eight different videos, most likely <clears throat> is that it's one appearing in our dimension at different times because it's coming from a dimension and an angle that we don't understand being three-dimensional beings. And that really is, is, is dimensions. Unless you understand, if, you, if you're two-dimensional, you don't understand it up. So if anything comes from the sky, you don't see it until it gets into your square, your dimension. And that okay. is really, and that's really how it works. I love this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I also have a question about us being multiple, multi multi-dimensional beings where we have access to that higher essence that is not in physical, but obviously you're tapping into yours, I'm tapping into mine um, uh, at daily. That's, that's how we navigate this. Um, how, do you, how do you explain that with um, how the connection works? Is there an explanation for that? The explanation is we, we live in a reality, a created reality, that where everything can happen. And we were once the original God consciousness that had an idea and a thought to create resistance in the form of matter. So putting that in, in simple terms, if, if I want to build up muscles, now we all have the same muscle base, if I want to build up my muscles like a, a weightlifter, then I go to the gym. But what do I need when I get to the gym? I need resistance. That resistance comes in the form of weights. So if spirit wishes to advance itself and its muscles, it <laughs> had to create resistance, which is matter. So matter is the resistance for spirit to advance and to grow and to get stronger. So our purpose is to spiritualize matter, in other words, to make the unconscious conscious. So if we are from a place of all possibility, and we are all possibility, that means we can do anything. And we are connected to everything because nothing is separate. We have the illusion of separation because we think and feel what we are. We don't be what we are. There's an ancient Egyptian, like Egyptian, initiation where one of the tasks was for the candidate for argument's sake let's just choose a tree as an example they had to spend days just staring and concentrating on the object on the tree and what they realized was at some point they would become the tree they would no longer be looking at it from the outside to the tree but they became one with the tree and they were looking from the tree out that's called spiritual concentration and i've experienced it personally so nothing is separate everything is a reflection of everything else everything is connected to everything else and when you concentrate on object 
you begin to realize that you, you're not looking at the object, you are the object. You become the object. And I've had experiences where I've seen myself from the object looking at the object. And that's yes. called spiritual concentration. And that is part of the ancient mystery school initiations. I've, I've had that too. There was, I took a series of classes called Avatar. And one of the first or second classes, they had you go out in nature. And, um, and I was able to, and I still do it all the time, connect with birds as they're flying. Um, that's why I think people love the drone footage is a lot of us have seen the world from that viewpoint. Um, and, and that's why we love the bird's eye view. It's not just from an airplane, <laughs> it's from flying. So, so, so that's, that's a, divine, a divine perspective because you're looking down. So that's, that birds are important. They are, they are free, they are spirit, they are a divine perception. And that's, and that's the, the, the beauty of birds really. So do you feel that your knowledge is part of the ascension, part of this big push for consciousness to be actualized? Um, the ascension I'm, I'm talking about is humanity um, becoming conscious embodied, not the ascension that everyone leaves and loses their physical essence. Do you, do you feel that that's, like, do you feel like you're on a mission to do this? I, I personally am on a, on a mission to do this. Um, I, I personally came here to, to, to help people for this very reason. And really, it, it's, it's re-emerging ancient knowledge of self in the modern day. Now, part of the Egyptian star codes that I decided to talk specifically about an age, which they call the 17th, 360-year cycle. Now, that began in 2001. Now, that is that specific year is encoded within the Great Pyramid, inside the Great Pyramid. So in two we have the 1760 year cycle, which, which is that humanity will shift to a seventh civilization. And that really is knowledge. So when you look at the word Egypt, that's a Greek word, it is not an Egyptian word. The, the, the Egyptian word for Egypt is Kehmet, which K is knowledge and Hemet is truth. So truth and knowledge. Now, when, when you look at the word Kehmet, it's a K, small e, a capital M, E, T, when you do it in Hebrew. Now, the letter M is Mem, which is water. And the word Moses means drawn from the water. So Moses is born within Egypt because it is the M within Kehmet. So we have Moses, obviously Moses is, 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 is the path of least resistance from captivity, the lower chakras to the promised land. Now, in mystical terms, we have what is known as the open sea, the path of least resistance, and that is the parting of the Red Sea of the Moses story. The, the burning bush, of course, is the fornix, which is the illumination of Golgotha, which is the skull, which is also Atlantis, which, which is the state of mind. So I have come here specifically to help humanity out of its ignorance, which is sin. Sin just means ignorance. That's all it is. And if you, you if you have knowledge, now the word ignorance contains the letters G and L, which is Gnostis, knowledge. So ignorance is knowledge. And if you have knowledge, you can never be a sinner because sin means ignorance. Ah. Ah. And, and um, the idea of soul, um, do you have a um, insight um, one of the people during Humanity Unplugged, and I don't remember who it was, it was either on that uh, uh, Humanity Unplugged um, 11 day thing that we did with Omar that was fantastic. Um, hmm. And Omar, you guys, if you don't know about Watchers Talk, you want to know about Watchers Talk, it's awesome. Um, Someone said, oh, well, all the souls were created all at the same time. So it's not like the it's it's a big bang kind of theory. And so do you agree with that? Is that that energy was all created all at the same time? 
I do. I, I think I think the souls are dimensionless, but I think they are embers of the the, the central fire, and I think they 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 were fragmented out to basically spiritualize matter and 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 then make matter conscious to then come back. Now, eventually, when all the souls come back together again, they will then become a they 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 then become creators. They become universal creators like the source, the God. So when you have all of these souls that have learned of specialized matter, have become conscious, and all the, the negative energy debt has been paid, so to speak, they then become the gods of the universe, and the god of the universe goes and, and does other things. So <laughs> it's a, a, a team effort, so yes, I would subscribe to that. I do think we're all, as I say, we're all embers of the, of the central fire, and therefore we are all part of the central fire. We're all whirlpools, whirlpools in the same river. Right. Okay. So, so okay. Another question. Then I, I feel like I'm a student here asking the professor questions. I hope it's okay. Time in third dimension we have time, but in other dimensions, this existence is timeless. Um, there's space and time here. There may I think there's still from my studies. There's still space in even the sixth dimension, and maybe even up to the eighth. Um, but I'm not sure about time. What do you think, Professor? Time is in every dimension. Oh. Because if you if, if you imagine, what do we say that God is? We say that God is eternal. So if God is eternal, that relates to time. So even in in sort of you know zero zero dimensions you have time you have time everywhere time is atomic and we have atoms everywhere time is a perception you know it, it's now uh, 10 to 6 p.m for me and probably about 10 to 11 in the morning for you so so time is a perception i'm going back in time now to speak to you when you're when i hear your voice your voice is coming through time to the future me and when i receive that voice it is in my now your future my past so time is really a perception and the faster you go the more time changes we change the clocks for one back twice a year so where does that time go so time really is the construct of the mind but it is also a subtle should we say movement a series of movements and when you look at how reality is it, it, it's it's like a flickery if you imagine a movie reel set between two frames and time goes like that between those two constructs of, 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 of space so that really is time but but time is universal time is the fabric of creation time exists in every single dimension in some form because in order to 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 judge time you know movement distance everything you have to have comparables and that is that is time so time is really a universal thing in, in every single mention this that that's what i i definitely agree i definitely agree that that's part i i call this a game i don't know how you envision it but it you know, like a computer program game and the, we're in the have the 3d i i'm glad i'm not in the first dimension or the second dimension right now because that that's really heavy so um what about space them space okay <laughs> first of all the, the 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 source of time is the number nine because number nine is the fingerprint of creation now when you see the diamond it is the central tree that's, that's why we have nine pyramids we, we have the source of time motion and vibration space for me is issue is storage space and it is a virtual software uh, and when you look at what we've got to be maybe it is a central processing unit to fragment before the so space again for me is a construct it, it is a construct of the mind it's one of the creator who has put all this together as a mental construct and everything that we have here in our reality is also a mental construct everything that i see in my outer reality a projection comes from the projector, me. 
So what I see as a reality is really my innermost reflected outwards. Right. So everything is really a construct of the mind from the creator's mind who had a thought, which was really a controlled big bang, an expression of the mind, and everything from that came into existence. Okay. So so I, I call that my hologram, um, that, that I'm in my little hologram and I can manifest from it. I, my imagination created all of it. And if I don't like it, I just have to stop and recreate. Um, how do we, how do you see us connecting all of these different holograms, your hologram with mine, with Sugar Bee, with Omar, with whoever else is on, uh, there's lots of people on. Um, how do you see us all creating in, in, in harmony? Because we're going out of this combative competition age to a more co-creative age. How do you see that working? Well, of course, every single piece of the hologram reflects the central hologram, the original piece of the hologram, which is what we are. So really, it's only the illusion of separation from, from the original piece, oh. which we're not. So that is, you know, when, when you look at human bodily movements, it is known as the, the, the language of wave form. Uh -huh. When you look at the mathematics of human bodily movement, it is known as Fourier mathematics. Now, Fourier mathematics is the mathematics that was used when we, cre we didn't create it, when we discovered it and pretended we created the hologram. So human movements are holographic mathematically. But each part of a hologram is a reflection of the original piece of the hologram, and that is what we are. So even though we are, you know, some, some of us realise that we were still connected, and some people are that, that much into matter, into material, into this is the only existence, this is the only absolute reality, that they can never see that they are still part of the original hologram. They're still part of the original fire, the original source. And what and what it takes when I want to talk about making the unconscious conscious incorporates that too. It incorporates bringing people who have no knowledge of themselves, who have no knowledge of what the universe is, who have no knowledge of what anything is, because they believe that all that exists is a physical vessel. And that really is as far from the truth as you can get. Yes. And it is a case of, of, of bringing that unconsciousness into the conscious world. Now, an example, again, biblical example of that, because the Bible is metaphors for what I'm saying. The ocean is seen as, as consciousness, human consciousness, because you have the sea, but you have the majority below the surface, the unseen, the unconscious. So when you make the, the unconscious conscious, everything is then seen. That means you are then walking on water because you are now completely visible, that there is no such thing as unconsciousness because you brought it into the conscious realm, you are walking on water. So it is a case of, of helping people. And, and when we talk about the, the only begotten son that was sent to earth, well, what does that really mean? Well, begotten or beget means wounded lamb. So in other words, a wounded lamb falls behind the flock. It needs extra nurturing, it needs extra attention. Now, only means one accord. So only begotten means to bring everyone to the same level and move them forwards together as one. So it wasn't God sent his only begotten son, he sent his sons his only begotten in order for everyone to come together as one, to come forward to advance as one. And that really is the only begotten son of the Bible. And that is what we're trying to do, is make the people who are not aware, make them aware of who they are. Because the answer to the mystery is within the mystery itself. If you want to know that the, the, what the universe means, what the oceans means, what nature means, the laws of astronomy, the laws of spirit, the laws of matter, you must first of all understand yourself. And that is what every single monument, every single monolith, every single religious scripture is really telling you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, let's see. I just want to make sure that um, Sugar Bee said, wow, so cool. And she also said, thank you for... When you said your your life purpose, she said thank you for for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming thank to you. earth. And um, and uh, Omar said, "Mike is it?" 
Sorry. Thank you. I'm all the in the past. Thank you. <laughs> you. <laughs> so, so I, I think that there's a lot of people that are waking up right now. They could really benefit from working with you, and um, and following your information, because if they if they need to be able to understand, there there's some way to connect. The information you give connects this with your heart. Somehow, it, it for me, um, and I've had spiritually transformative experiences. I've had a lot of the things you've had and have the same interests, but I, I needed someone to help connect the dots a little bit more, or, or I just haven't spent enough time and you've poured a lot of your life into this research. So I want to make sure that everybody, I've been putting your banner up and been putting your link to your website in the comments, but I want to make sure that everyone has a chance to work with you and find you. So what are the best ways for people to uh, find you? Again, pro probably the, the, the best one is the website. It has a contact page, etc. It also has links to my uh, YouTube, Facebook. So. That's probably the, the the best central place. But if you just go Google and just type my name in, then then I do I do appear with other people of the same name. Of course. I do appear there, and and everything I do is is, is in the public domain. So it, it is it is there. It's visible. Anyone can do. It. But probably the the website will be the best place if they want to contact me directly, because there's a contact page that that I, that I check literally every 20, 30, 40 minutes. So. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This is um, this is an opportunity for everyone to see and understand how powerful you really are, and why there's no mistake that you came here during this time of huge change. And these, uh, Michael's got tools and a way to understand your part in a big way it's like he connected all the dots at least for me and and i haven't even gotten to read it all but it, the logic of it and the opportunity to do the alchemy that is at our fingertips really is is uh, what michael offers so i want to make sure that everybody can oh okay so omar said he's read most of your book so there'll be a pop quiz at the end of this then <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so well no I, I i have to say i love what you're doing and i hope you'll be back i hope we can i i would love to learn more from you i hope you'll do some courses um uh where you break it into pieces for people um and actually that was the only other question i had was where to start when you go to your website which book would you even start with is there a progression that you suggest it really is a progression from from the early onwards the, the, the one i'm writing at the moment called who built the period is really deeper than I've ever been in deep than I've ever seen anybody else go. So okay. It really will, really, really will put into perspective what is going on and who you are and what your purpose is. And all this lovely knowledge wisdom has been in a time capsule for, for all of these thousands and thousands of years. I said at the beginning that due to Egyptian star cows, I was able to date the Great Pyramid. The date that I gave it is 73,440 years of age. So this knowledge has been waiting find to re-emerge now and what i've had to do is reconnect myself to what i already know and that is what i've done yes so i already knew this i just have to actually the one is going to be is going to be, in my opinion probably the most special thing that i've ever written up until then i would guess you know alchemy of the gods is, is probably probably a good stepping stone for the one that's to come okay uh because that, that is the lightest one okay it's still the lightest one okay okay alchemy of the gods and then the mystery of the pyramids is the right 
So, so I, I think this is a great opportunity. I'm afraid we're out of time, so we're going to have to say goodbye, but uh, we'll do this again. Thank you so, so much. And, um, um, and uh, Omer's looking, he, he said he was up for the pop quiz and he's, uh, he learned so much from Mike, many gratitudes, and that he's looking forward to who built the pyramids. So, and, and I am too. So thank you so much. Oh, Christ code is really good too. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I went on your site and it was like, where do I start? Oh my gosh. So I, I kind of chickened out and went into the videos because I didn't have time to read all of them. But um, I, I hope you'll teach. I hope you will teach. Uh, it, this is fantastic. And I just want to compliment you so much. Appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I have had a, a thought to do workshops and to teach. So when I've got to formulate in my mind, then I will be looking to, to okay. do it. Okay. 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 Well, got to sign off now. Thank you so much again. And everyone, uh, go to michael-feely.com. Okay. Bye-bye.